cool more rapidly than the fast-moving center. Overflows resulting from surges or blockages build up the channel margins, contain the flow, and elevate it above the surrounding landscape. The surface of these stable lava channels may crust over, eventually forming lava tubes. The thin crust gradually thickens into a more substantial roof several feet thick. Because rock is a poor conductor of heat, these tubes insulate the lava flowing within them and allow temperatures in excess of 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit to be maintained for many miles. Tubes originating at Kupayanaha extend more than seven miles downhill to the ocean. The ability of tube-fed pahoehoe to travel over much greater distances than surface flows has been an important factor in the seaward growth and gentle topographic profiles of Hawaii's volcanoes. Lava can be seen traveling through subterranean tubes when portions of the tube ceiling or wall collapse, forming a skylight or window. These openings act as vents for searing hot gases released from the flowing lava. They also allow volcanologists to collect samples and measure the temperature of the flow. A unique type of Pelly's hair may be seen at skylights where bubbly lava stretches to spin long, thin strands of volcanic glass. Differing from the needle-like variety formed by lava fountains, its delicately interwoven texture resembles cotton candy. When channels break open or lava tubes become clogged, the confined lava stream within is forced out onto the surface. As the flowing lava breaks up its own earlier formed crust, pieces are rafted along. Curved, ropey folds are common on the surfaces of pahoehoe flows. These structures are formed as the fluid interior of the flow pushes its cooling skin into folds and wrinkles. Such surfaces are frequently seen where a tongue of lava reaches the base of a slope or is blocked by an obstruction. The front of this flow rolls forward, much like the tread of a tank. As the flows pass through forested areas, they surround trees which burn away, leaving their impression preserved as molds within the hardened lava. The combustion of plant roots and other organic material forms methane gas that collects underground. After dark, the burning gases can be seen eerily rising from incandescent cracks in the cooling flow. Pockets of methane frequently become concentrated to explosive pressures under flow margins. Powerful explosions can occur without warning and are a considerable threat to the unwary. Upon reaching the coast, the lava enters the sea and the formation of new land begins. This is a complex process influenced not only by the nature of the flows, but also by the submarine topography and the forces of the ocean. When lava meets water, processes ranging from gentle boiling to spectacular steam explosions can result. Here, gouts of spatter and huge sheets and bubbles of volcanic glass, called limu opele, are blown into the air. the ocean is calm, small flows move slowly but steadily forward between waves. Generally, lava gently entering the ocean is insulated by its cooled surface layer, thus reducing the potential for violent interaction. However, if lava moves quickly into deep water and forms a submarine tube, Large steam explosions may occur after waves splash into the tube mouth.
spatter and chunks of tube wall may be blown high into the air. Rivulets of lava flowing over cliffs and to the surf are quickly broken up and dispersed. Black sand produced from wave-shattered lava accumulates in pockets and beaches along the coast. Clouds of steam rise as the waves splash water into tube mouths and over the hot lava flow. Heavy surf pounding against the growing shoreline may shatter and tear the pahoehoe as it emerges from tubes in the tidal zone. The material tumbles down slope with the retreating waves to form an underwater pile of rubble or talus. As flows move out atop this pile, they build a lava bench. Though the benches may appear to be safely approachable, many are often very unstable and dangerous to walk on. Some benches grow to eventually form new dry land, while others collapse violently back into the sea, leaving behind severed lava tubes and a boiling ocean. In this instance, a two-foot diameter fire hose flow shoots out nearly 20 feet from the cliff face, precipitating large explosions in the shallow water. Although the land building processes that occur above sea level are the most readily observed, those that take place below the surface build the foundation for the new land. Here, about 30 feet underwater, a tube-fed pahoehoe flow advances down the talus, forming pillow lavas. Today, in the saga of the Hawaiian Islands, the lava has prevailed, constructing more than 100 acres of new land since this eruption began. But in time, subsidence and erosion will prevail, slowly returning these magnificent islands to the sea. Although Kilauea volcano is estimated to be as much as 500,000 years old, the surface of the mountain that is above sea level covers about 540 square miles and is made up of lava that is almost entirely younger than 1,000 years. The processes illustrated here have played a primary role in the formation of its landscapes and will continue to do so far into the future. <laughs>